Linux OTC. Welcome to episode 26. I'm Bill. I'm Majid. I'm Leo. Ah, here we are again. Again and again and again. I get the feeling that you have done something unspeakable, Bill. Something unspeakable and unthinkable, which is to actually plan for this show. Well, that's me. I thought I thought the whole point was that it's off the cuff. Hold on, I've it heard is. nothing. I've heard nothing of this. What do you mean? The no, plasma just, six thing. Yeah, just that is enough. Oh, wasn't okay, it? got it. Well, I mean, I mentioned what I was going to talk about, and not even I know exactly what I'm going to say about plasma six, other than I'm, I did have never, a cheeky little play with it. Never was a truer word said, eh? Even no. I don't know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I, do, I don't. I don't. They. They. The wife asks me every time I'm getting ready for a show. So what are you guys gonna talk about? And with Mintcast, I can say. I mean, we're gonna talk about this, 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 this in this order, and uh, there's not gonna be any deviation from that because actual heads will roll. Yeah, I was gonna say there's two people <laughs> on the show that will make sure that that is the case. <laughs> yeah. So that, but on OTC, she asks, and I'm like, I, God, you know, I can't tell you really. It really well, today is. you got to tell her we talked about her. Yep. I talked about her a lot, I think. What, More than therapist? maybe I should. Yeah. <laughs> She's unpaid. She, she deserves a raise. Yeah. But yeah, Plasma I, Six. Well, well, as long as it's your therapist and not your <laughs> let's, hitman. <laughs> let's, let's move hastily away from my wife as a topic. Yeah. Because you never know when she's watching and when she's not. <laughs> yeah, this, is the, 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 this will turn into a cat meme, won't it? Yeah. yeah. Afternoon, <laughs> Mrs. Hauser. Uh, I, need, I need a good solid week out of the doghouse just to get reset. Yeah, so Plasma, Plasma 6. 6. Yes. Yeah, okay. what's, your, what's your thoughts? So I, um, because I, so I was running Ferron on this podcasting box. And I saw the KDE videos and I thought, hmm, doesn't look like a massive change. Just looks like, you know, some aesthetic stuff. And then I thought to myself, it's been a while since I've distro hopped. You know, it's all been all of about a week. So, uh, you know, why not? So um, I uh, now the thing I found a little bit annoying was that it was diff- it seemed to be difficult to actually get it. Um, you know, it, it's not in any PPAs. You, Hold on. Uh, you're not running Slackware? Oh, no, no, unfortunately come on. not. Come yeah. on. And then even Arch didn't have it straight away. No, they and didn't. S- and so the only way was KD Neon, um, which I thought, okay, that's fine. So I, I downloaded the ISO, put it onto my Ventoy USB stick, um, which then promptly didn't boot. Um, so I thought, okay, fine. So then I did a good old-fashioned flash using... Uh, I think I used Rufus initially and then Etcher and most of the time it wouldn't boot off the USB. Then when it finally did boot and that's because I'd done it as a DD, right? Rather than as an ISO image. Um, right. It kept on coming up with errors saying, you know, need to load kernel, need to load kernel. And I was starting to get a little bit annoyed. Um, and so after having tried that, I thought it must be the ISO file. That's an issue. So I re-downloaded uh, the ISO and because it's, so basically what, what I understand from KDE Neon, Neon is that it, the, the base OS is based on the LTSs of Ubuntu, but the desktop is a rolling because that gets every yeah. thing that they do, any, every change that they do gets it straight away and so when you download the iso it's got a date you know that this is the iso of this date um and so uh so I, yeah so i re-downloaded it yesterday and then yeah managed to install it and so i'm running it uh now and um you're recording on it now i'm recording on it now yeah Ooh. oh cool yeah um and i must say it's uh it's fine um that's it. it. Look, that's it, that's it, the end of the review. No, yeah. it's it, fine. It, 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 Stop it, while it, you're ahead. <laughs> it looks nicer um, than uh, previous KDEs. Not massively, I'll be honest, but I do notice that the font rendering is better. Um, and the, at least in the previous KDE ones that I had on this box, I used to Hold get on. the odd kind of. 
Which KDE, like which flavor of KDE plasma did you have? Like, so, uh, but, what distro? What distro? Yeah, was okay. So, so directly before this was Ferran. Okay. Yeah, which is basically mint with KDE. I mean, that's right. not exactly true, but it's kind of true. And the font rendering got better from there to Neon? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and the before Ferran, it was Kubuntu 20, would have been 2304, probably. Yeah, Ubuntu has uh, had the best font rendering of, uh, the Kubuntu, I guess, specifically, has always yeah. had the best font rendering. Um, and, um, yeah, so, um, and apart from that, yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 bloody fast. Um, you know, this whole thing uh, back in the day, apparently KD used to be bloated. I mean, it really doesn't feel like it now. I mean, it's n very nippy, I must I, say. I think the, the bloat still comes from, what, uh, version 4? Like KDE four when it was still called software compilation before they broke it apart and named it Plasma. I think mm. a lot of that is where that um, that idea of KDE being heavy comes from, and even KDE three as well. But once we hit Plasma, you're you're looking at it. It beats GNOME any any time of the day. It, it, uh, it rivals XFCE and Mate in resources. Um, I did a thing back in 20, uh, 2021 and looked at all the desktops and that's when i discovered this i mean fact kde plasma is just lightweight and it always has been and if you turn off animations it's one of the most lightweight distros you can get your hands on I, which is always why i've always wondered why there is such a thing as lxqt because i didn't think that would be my I didn't think it would be much lighter, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I suppose that's just a like run. like for the same reason that people run XFCE versus something like Mate or mm. you know the other GTKs. Yeah, um, it's just well, this is what I'm used to. This is what I like. I this is familiar, so I'm gonna just keep using this. And uh, coming from LXDE, the QT underpinnings was a pretty big change. Yeah, and I remember that because I remember uh, I remember having Lubuntu on an old uh, laptop, and I remember they changed from the. Yeah, LXDE to LXQ, and that was a bit of a, it was a bit of a change, yeah. I wasn't yeah. crazy about that change, to be honest with you. I mean, I know why they did it. They probably, they kind of came to the limits of what LXDE could really do, given what it was based on. I always loved LXDE, yeah. though, and Lubuntu based on it. You talk about fast, that was just, you yeah. could throw that on a, on a two gigabyte or something like that and it would just fly yeah you know and i still use it every once in a great while if i'm putting something on a computer that might be less than perfect i'll throw an LXDE I remember, thing on yeah, it i remember i remember lubuntu used to be great on um you know those intel atom Notebooks, yeah. Netbooks. Oh, the net, yeah, netbooks. Yeah, never, you know, from like 2009 to, you know, 2010, that kind of thing. One gig of RAM, really weedy Atom processor. The, the slowest hard disk you could ever possibly purchase. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but, but, and I remember Lubuntu used to work really well with that, I remember. There used to be a guy I used to work with who actually, I remember he came in, he did a presentation, he was connecting his laptop up, and I looked and I went, he's running Lubuntu. <laughs> oh my god yeah and i remember chatting with him afterwards and uh, he's apparently quite upset now that there isn't a 32-bit version and i'm kind of like dude it's 2024 yeah a 32-bit I mean? version of what lubuntu yeah oh, well wow, you can yeah. get you can get a 32-bit iso from debian still for now and install what they call the light version it doesn't it, it's not clear that you're getting lxde but then when you when you install that you do get a classic looking LXDE desktop with hold on DE or QT DE LXDE. really yeah mm, to this that, day that pile of code has been unmaintained for years really I mean has it or I mean because I've seen some, yeah I'm, I mean they moved over to uh, LXDE they did what, 2017 16 17 I would argue if you're going to put that on a machine though you're not really because I think there's been some like security updates and patches here and there there's still an lxde website you know there's still yeah i mean what could possibly go wrong eh? i i don't know i i think it is still me. if you really really need something light and you want it to resemble windows 98 or whatever you know yeah i yeah it's i'd last like stable it to be release. an option it's last stable release was in 2021 mm. so, so th th this is actually the first actually time i'm not 
as long ago as I I would have thought. Yeah, yeah, same here. Um, I was just gonna say this is actually the first time I'm actually running KDE Neon properly. I mean, all the other KDE distros that I've done have been either Kubuntu or like the others I've mentioned. Kubuntu predominantly, to be honest. Kubuntu is the one that I've used quite a lot when it comes to the KDE side. I remember trying to, KDE Neon was one of the distros that you could get onto a Intel MacBook. So I remember doing that um, when I was experimenting. Um, but um, the thing I found about KDE Neon is it's not exactly a full fat distro. Um, you know, is it funny that, you know, we're talking about blow, you know, good old subjective blow. Um, you know, I had to find a an office suite and I had to, you know, install quite a few, I wouldn't say table stakes applications, but, you know, stuff that normally I don't have to go off and find. And I must say, Discover hasn't improved. You know, it's not the best um, software manager out there. Well, it's okay. Nobody uses it, so... Well, I mean, so I am thinking whether to, um, so normally I, I, I normally install GNOME software as well because it just seems to work better and it's got flat hub integration and all that sort of stuff. Um, I haven't yet, um, but I might, I might, I might actually put the mint software manager on actually. I think that's quite a good software manager. It is. Hold on. So does, are you saying on KDE Neon Discover does not have flat pack integration? No, it does. It does oh, okay. have flat pack into integration, and it's also got uh, it's also got Snap installed by default. Right. So if so if you wanted to, you know, Snap D whatever, but no, but the the uh, the thing Discover just keeps crashing. It keeps messing up. You know, uh, you try download. You know, it's just it's not the most usable or reliable. A lot of times, it's been my experience that a lot of times when Discover crashes, it's got more to do with LDFM or something like that. Uh, trying to because it just would not let me download and install LibreOffice. Just wouldn't let me do it. Um, every time it would come up, it would crash. Every time it would come up, it would crash. Sometimes just searching for it would make it crash. Um, and, and so I ended up having to uh, g get LibreOffice from the website, which is obviously not a big deal. But I mean, I did kind of think to myself, if this is the only software center you're going to put on, on the distro that you think shows off the bleeding edge of what KDE is, you might want to put a bit more work into it. Just, just saying, you know. Um, I mean, you can get there's a th there's a tool out there called Muon, which is basically a uh, plasma version or a QT version of Synaptic. Yeah, I it's remember Muon Synaptic, from back in the day. So you you've got that option, or just install from the. But you know, K Neon wants you to use PKCon, presumably because it can also update. Plasma plugins or something like that. Yeah. So, so. I, it, it, interestingly, so when I did finally, there was one piece of software, um, which for which I just gave up and I just got gone went to the terminal, and yeah. it did install it, but it did come up with some funny things when it's when I'd put you know sudo apt get install, and I it still seemed to install it, but some warnings came out which I didn't exactly understand. I didn't. I, I should have taken a screenshot they, and maybe you guys might know does. what it was. It usually does kind of try to make you use PKCon, I think. The last time I used this was years ago, but the last time I used it, that was uh, that was my instinct, right? Just apt install because it's an Ubuntu base. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, I mean, it did it uh, because what I did was the, it was basically the um, uh, desktop client for Mega, you know, the file um, storage thing, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so I. I, I wasn't in the repos. There is the flat pack version. I'm, uh, d there isn't a flat pack version yet. So I just went to their website and, you know, got a script from, for, because there's, it's in the 2204 repos and this is based off 2204, isn't it? Um, and it was just a bit odd because it just, as I said, it just kind of said, you know, it said something about app. I really should have screenshotted it. Um, so I know exactly what it said, but it said something about app, but then installed it anyway. So I don't know what, what was going on. Hmm. It just, it complained. I haven't used it in a while. I had, a couple of years ago, I had my wife's computer on um, KDE Neon, and then I noticed that she would go sometimes a month without updating it, and Neon oh, yeah. suffers kind of the same way uh, Arch does when you don't update it very often, um, just because of the rolling KDE stuff. So I put her on Kubuntu. That way I knew it would work no matter how long she yeah. would wait. 
Yeah, I mean, I would have waited for Kubuntu actually if I. But then I heard that when Kubuntu comes out, it's going to be later this month. It's not going to have six. No, you're going to have to work, wait until October to. Oh, no, just use the PPA. I mean, that's, oh yeah, you could do that. There is a back by the PPA. KDE folks. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's. I mean, it's slightly it, less official than than Neon. But it kind of gives you the benefits of Neon or similar benefits of Neon while at the same time you're using the Kubuntu tools, which seem to seems to just work a little better. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience? Because you put it on Arch, didn't you? Yeah. Well, so how did you the, find the first it? thing I, I noticed was if you, when you install it, I mean, you talk about a bunch of packages. Um it installed everything, and then because it replaced some KDE 5 or Plasma 5 uh, dependencies and components with the all of the sick stuff, all of a sudden nothing worked on the desktop. I couldn't even get it to reboot from the menu. I had to drop down to a terminal. Oh, I didn't have to, like, control all five or anything like that but i could i was gonna say this is the kind of update that you would want to actually do that with uh, i had i'd been thinking i would have done that i would have just yeah. dropped completely out of uh wayland and went into a terminal but i didn't but i did get it to reboot and man it took a minute to it took a minute to reboot presumably because it had some new config files to write or something and then um the wallpaper the custom or the the default wallpaper i not a big fan um it's very bright they that's the second time they've put kind of a weird looking almost ai generated looking thing it, hmm. it, this was a real person a real it? person made that yeah yeah and well, on top i'm not of gonna that, say anything <laughs> it's got a light and dark mode to it so if you let yeah. plasma handle your stuff then based on like the time of day it will turn into that that darker yeah. nighttime which I mean, this has probably got to be one of my most favorite KDE desktop wallpapers of all time. Second only to the Alien Cityscape that was uh, that was. That's the other shipped, one everybody hates. <laughs> that was shipped in KDE three. That one. Oh no, the the one. Yeah, in, uh, I'm thinking the one. Or I'm thinking the one that was shipped on my Slackware eight point two ISOs. Okay, that's what I'm thinking, and. Man, that, that's just, there's just too much nostalgia in that wallpaper. Well, you got the floating panel at the bottom then, and I thought I was going to turn that off, but then when I maximized the window, it snapped right down to the yeah. bottom. And it's quite nice. I quite like yeah, it. Yeah, I I like mm -hmm. it now that it now that I see it does that. Now, if it would have if it would have stayed right where it's at, and then like maximized the window, and the window would sit on top of that, and you would see like this tiny sliver of your desktop wallpaper on the bottom, that would drive me nuts. So I would have mm. had to turn that off. But it doesn't. It dynamically snaps to the to the uh, edges down there, and yeah. it just feels like kind of a cool effect, kind yeah. of a modern the, sort of feel. The, the expose uh, view is very much like gnomes, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when you go into when you hot corner and you see, see all your windows and workspaces, it's a lot like the... And there's a search there as well. So it looks a lot like the GNOME activities. It's kind of had something like that. Well, so there's there's a bit of a difference. Uh, and I want to just, I want to talk about that. Because it okay. is a little less like GNOMEs and a little more like Mac OS. Where okay. you can't do like an application search when you do the expose in Plasma. But you can do an, an application search when you do it in GNOME. And if I'm not mistaken, in yes, Max. you can. Oh, you can really. Yeah, I've just done it now. Ooh. Okay, never mind. I'll I back why it off. Put that in there and not just have you run in K Runner or, or something. I don't know. That's so, what I so, do. So it so it is K Runner apparently. Okay. It's a, it is K Runner. It's a, um, that's the search uh, bar. Ooh. Yeah. 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 So the K Runner like so comes up with that. Okay. I did not. So, Notice that now but, that's a nice touch. That's yeah. a real nice touch. K Runner is a good example of how to do it right. Um, oh, I love K Runner, man. Yeah, I love I I love that to the point where usually I don't even use a menu. I just sometimes yeah. I'll leave that yeah. off. Speaking of Mac OS, it works a lot like Spotlight. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and you were talking about that in previous episode of. Uh, Linux user space where you've got like three ways to get to 
applications. Yeah. Well, I just use Albert. Really, I just use Albert if I'm on a GTK desktop. I use KRunner if I'm on a QT, well, on a Plasma desktop, and then Spotlight if I'm on a Mac. Well, have you ever tried U-Launcher? Um, I want to say so. It it seemed like it was less flexible than Albert was, which is why okay. I go through the, yeah, the so, um, motions of installing that every time. Yeah, so I used U-Launcher, and U-Launcher seemed to work all right. The reason why I didn't use Albert was because I heard something about... I mean, I did install it on another device, but I heard something about that it's not maintained as much anymore or something. Mm. Or the, So I just... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, both work. So th- this is the way it looks. If you, I've just put the screenshot in the uh, Discord. In the Discord. So you know it, and that is that's a K runner search, K runner search box in there. So it's got it's, your desktops on top, yeah. and then you get kind of an overview. Hmm. And there, between the the like desktop switcher and the overview, you've got the uh, the K runner. Yeah, right there, and. This is great radio, folks, isn't it? <laughs> Man show yeah, screenshot uh, yeah. on the internet. But um but yeah, try to remember I mean. to incorporate that somehow into Hold on, take take another screenshot where you actually do a search. Uh, I'll okay, I'll I'll post these out on Mastodon. So, so or actually uh Bill, I don't know how, how like how much go, image folks. space we have on that <laughs> server, but I mean, you know, post it there too, right? On the yeah. in the show notes. Oh, is yeah, that yeah. Windows, Eric? <laughs> I see you, Eric. Yeah, so there it is for anybody watching. Um, make that go away. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a cool touch for people that... Because there are things that people do like about GNOME or some of the, some of the tooling, some of the modern features, but yet... If you want yeah. those things, but you want your your plasma desktop, you know you have options. All right, I I wanna I wanna fight whoever said Albert wasn't developed. Um, that was 20, me. Yeah, I might, yeah we'll, that, that's we're gonna, what I heard. We're gonna fight because okay. uh, depending on when you heard that, so there wasn't a release in 2021. Maybe that's why. But in 2022, there was one in July, October, December. In 2023, there was one almost every single month, and mm-hmm. then there was a. Uh, except December, and then there's another release that uh, happened six days ago. So, okay. and and it's a major, minor improvement version release. So it's they went to zero that twenty three. Okay. So this is actually something I'm going to need to try because uh, now does that come in the form of a GNOME extension or is that a package you install? Uh, it's a package you install. Okay. Um, you can build at the end it yourself, of the day, or you at the can end of the use day, the OBS software repo to install it. Uh, so you can you always get your updates. At the end of the day, I find that KD, you know, K Runner, is the best of all of these. It's just yeah. a shame you can't really get K Runner on something that isn't KD, unless I've missed the trick on that one. Well, you're just using the wrong desktop. I think is the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I quite, I mean, I quite oh. like the gnome one. I quite like the gnome one. To be fair. Um, the, what was the oh, it's not nearly used? as as feature complete. I mean, well, feature comp- okay. It's not nearly as uh, has as many features. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Well, I mean, yeah. K Runner will do math for you. I mean, yeah, yeah. K Runner will do everything. Yeah, U Launcher. Um, I was I used that on Mint. I remember because Mint in Mint Cinnamon um, because there wasn't a specific you know K Runner or GNOME thing there. So I remember using it there. That's where I used it, and it's okay. It's okay. I'm, yeah. It's not going to win any awards, I don't think. Nah, run Albert, man. I, I, that's exactly the setup that I run Albert on, on mm. Cinnamon. Yeah, all right. I'll do that on my Cinnamon box. It it no, changes that's... your experience from Windows 7 all the way up to, I don't know, whatever's better than Windows 7. Because Windows 7 was one of the good Windows. I remember a lot of people felt that way at the time. Like, this is this is the first time the computer feels really powerful. But then, yeah, well, that that was only because Vista was so terrible, and then yeah. like any improvement was, you know, yeah, it was a low bar. Yeah, yeah, it was a low bar to start from, wasn't it? Yeah, and then they were like, "Oh God, Service Pack One," and then it didn't break everything, so people were happy. You know, I had I didn't have the same experience with Vista as everybody else did. I was actually in school in the Microsoft. Program this is because in those no, days. I guarantee it's because you sat down in front of a Vista machine that was already having Service Pack One on it or something like well, that. Well, no, were, there's no they way gave this me is a launch disc. day kind of Vista. 
because I was in the Microsoft program at school at the time, they gave us each a copy of Vista Student Edition. And it was 32-bit because at the time I had a, what was this thing? I think it was the uh, the Gateway 800 with Windows XP, 512 meg of RAM, mm. uh, Intel uh, Pentium 4. And I decided to dual boot the Vista and the XP. Ooh, brave. And I was getting better, perform better performance off of the... Uh, the Vista than I was the XP at the time, and everybody else I'd talked to was having shit experience with it. I'll, I'll tell you why. I, the The real reason that Vista sucked on launch was because of its such a it had such a short list of compatible hardware yeah. that you know if you're upgrading from a previous Windows, I yeah. can almost guarantee your hardware was not on that list. And yeah. if it wasn't on that list you would see a blue screen more often than you would see a desktop. And it was just a terrible experience. And even if you did have compatible hardware, it probably wasn't powerful enough because Vista yeah. had higher hardware requirements. I think it was the first version of Windows that needed a gig of RAM, for example. Yeah, there, was, um, there, there were a couple of different versions of Vista. And they, were like, they had a premium version or something like that. Yeah, but there were yeah. stickers. I, I was selling laptops at the time. And there was a sticker on every laptop and it would basically say like vista compatible or yeah. uh i remember vista, that yeah. uh, made for vista or something it would yeah, come yeah, with yeah. xp but then it would have another sticker on it saying vista compatible yeah, yeah which, I mean, which means that, which means that which means you could upgrade it but you didn't really want you really shouldn't because yes. it just <laughs> slow your thing down that's the exact point but they put these these stickers on them that had the vista logo on them so it gave you this idea that well it, it's going to work and then you know it did Except the experience was terrible. Yeah. I don't know. And then 7 came out, and it was just better all the way around. But yeah. then, well, then 8 came out, and that was the best we've ever had, isn't it? I mean. I did not dislike it. I mean, coming uh, from Windows quite, 7, it wasn't that bad. I quite liked I, 8 and 8.1, to be honest. I know I'm a weirdo for this, but yeah. I it was I think right. the people that really, really hated it, they didn't, they weren't putting in their head the idea that the screen full of tiles was the menu not the home screen yeah, yeah. I, I think the problem i think the problem was was that in in what is normally a real turn of events for microsoft they were a bit too quick to the ball yeah they they jumped forward to the touch friendly forward yeah. uh, ipad esque you know convertible whatever lifestyle in 2012 when, Look, just just which admit was it. Too early, which was too early. Just admit it. Microsoft wasn't Apple, and so they failed. Mm. Mm. Well, I said that. That's an interesting comment. But do I you think... mean that? Do you mean that they're not Apple in the sense that they don't do what Apple does, which is actually wait till everybody else has invented it, then look at it and make it the best that they can, and then bring it out as if they invented it. Well, no, Apple brings well, it out and then, like, says, okay, this is what we use from now on, and then the whole world just does that. Yeah, yes. Okay, actually, both of the things that you said, but extremely straight-facedly, unironically, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 100,000%, because when Apple does it, I mean, for better or for worse, they tend to do it the way that people expect it should work, and yeah. then it catches on. It doesn't matter that... Android has had this feature for the past two years or something like that. Nobody had that particular phone anyway because the the market is so segmented that everybody was still on the Pixel, I don't know, random number seven, and they just didn't get it. They, they weren't able to take advantage of stuff like that. But the thing that people complained about with Windows 8, and it was the silliest complaint because there was literally a physical button on your keyboard to yeah, prevent with you from having to deal with it. Is the little hidden start button? Yeah, it Where's would go the away. Start menu. I don't know how to press start. Where Where do I press the start button? Like you could tell someone to just face roll on the keyboard, and the start menu would pop up. Like you don't even have to think about it, my man. Just smack your forehead into the keyboard, and I can almost guarantee you that the start menu will be there for you. You'll be okay. <laughs> speaking spe Speaking of Apple, did you see that um, article about um, Ubuntu working better with iOS devices? I'm sorry, what? <clears throat> there was a there's an I want app. this. Yeah, no, I put it in our Discord because it was um I thought you'd like it. Um oh, I'm Well that's presumptuous it. of you. 
Yeah, but, <laughs> you, but then you've just, yeah, well, I was right, though, wasn't I? You might have been. You might have been. He's not yeah. saying you're a, a, I don't a know. shill for Apple. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe I'll, put it, maybe I'll put it in the mink cast one. Maybe that's why. Could be. Bill, are you, are you like, gathering all these things? This has to go, all this stuff has to go in the show notes. I, yeah, I'll have and if, to. And if you're not writing extremely descriptive alt text for each of those images, I'm going to be very upset on behalf of people <laughs> that actually use the alt text for them. So, huh. Yeah, God knows where I put it. I'm sure I, I do remember sharing it at some point. God That's knows. Just his little hey, here we go. Found it. OMG Ubuntu. How to mirror your iPhone, iPad to Ubuntu. Oh, dude, I did see that. I didn't look into it, but I did see the headline on this one. Uh, yeah. So maybe it's time to look. Let's look into it. I want to yeah. see this. I'm the only, I think I'm the only one with an iPhone on the show. So, you know, this will only affect me, but it will affect me. It'll affect a lot of people. Yeah. More great radio. Man looks up thing on internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking Bill, about I know it. You got OBS. Change the scene uh, on OBS, Bill, right now, and then you can put it out on YouTube. Because I know you got that <laughs> scene set up, ready to go. Which one? <laughs> Where's it at? The. I, I think Majid wants me to Google it. No, no I don't mind. It's <laughs> an <laughs> OMG Ubuntu thing. <laughs> Bill, don't Google it. He's sharing the link. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm waiting. Oh, well, he keeps looking down at his keyboard like he is sharing the link, but I'm not sure. I don't see it yet. Yeah, you don't see it yet, do you? All right. No. Nah. Uh -uh. Not in our room, anyway. First. Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> fine, whatever. All right. Anyway, uh, so did you try KDE 6 then, um, Leo? Yeah, you bet I did. I've been on KDE 6 since I did the KDE episode on um, on the history. When was that? Two... That was a little over a month ago. I... As soon as it, I know, I saw that face. As yeah. soon as it was released as a alpha, alpha, alpha in Rawhide, okay. I jumped on that bad boy and I've been riding that thing ever since. Every single, uh, I swear, every couple of days is like two, three gigs of updates. And then there are a couple of times where I had to install eight gigs of updates. But then I go to my normal KDE Plasma 5 box on fedora and it had the same thing it had an eight gig update so okay. i don't know what that was about bill where did you go so anyway what did you think uh what do you think of it i think it's fantastic man like i actually enjoyed plasma i've had a really good time on plasma 5 um it is it's i feel like it's better than gnome it really is and and i'm a gnome guy i really really enjoy gnome but so have you got it installed on a desktop or a laptop? Uh, on both. I have um, I have it on. I have five on my desktop. I have five on a laptop, and then I also have six on this T four fifty S right here. Okay. So I've got so, I've got all the bells and whistles, man. Be are you talking about gestures? Are you about to talk about gestures? No, no. What I was going to, kind of about gestures. Um, but what I was going to say is that <clears throat> what I've in my experiences with KD, because I agree with you, because I'm like you, I'm a gnome guy. Yeah. Um, what I found is that KD is best on, at least for me, is for best on desktops. Um, it's not as, I mean, it's still perfectly fine and usable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's right. not as good as gnome on a laptop. I thought. Having said that, I've not tried six on now, a laptop. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing that actually surprised the crap out of me is uh, even Plasma 5.27 has all of the gestures that GNOME has when you're using a trackpad. They just decided to add a finger? All of the gestures that GNOME does with three fingers, Plasma wants you to do with four. So four fingers up will give you that expose and show you all your applications. But um, it, it's just the weirdest thing. It is the... I don't know why you would buck the entire system. Everybody does three fingers up. And I may, I mean, it might maybe, be kind of hard to do on some on some touchpads too that just aren't that big. I mean, this is from 2015. This touchpad works just fine on it. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying everybody has a ThinkPad or anything, but, you know, I mean, that's not the fanciest ThinkPad in the world either. It's, I think mm. I bought it for $300 at the time in 2018. But now yeah, we see to... we see more great radio. Man loads up computer. <laughs> well, I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to test these gestures. 
Check out the YouTube on this one, folks. Yeah, it's still oh, yeah. four. It's yeah. still four fingers up to get the expose window. But it does, as you said, um, integrate K Runner into that expose, which is fantastic. Well, is it configurable at all? Can you change it to three fig- finger? Or I would. I looked everywhere, I- at least in five. I looked everywhere in five and could not find anywhere where, it, like, I I went to the settings app and I was like finger, and I was like not that way app, not that way. And okay, did, I are, we gonna, are we going to have to put a not safe for work sticker on this? Because there's a lot of talk about fingers and fingering going on here. L- listen, oh, I'm a bit worried. That's your brain going look, there, brother. No, there, look. <laughs> there's a, if 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 you can see with your ears, there. I've got a keyboard. I'm fingering. That looks like a picture keyboard. of a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's it it looks like a skin on top of a. You know, you get like phone skins. It's like like that. Yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> but yeah, like um, I, I don't understand why Plasma decided to go with four fingers as opposed to three with with things that are traditional three. Like Mac OS does it with three, Windows does it with three, okay, GNOME so, does it with three. So are the gestures one to one like GNOMEs are? Uh besides the fingering, yes. Yeah, you can do everything that I mean, you know, like uh, No, but I mean by could because so for example, you know, if you are on GNOME, if oh yeah, I can see that. Okay, fine, fair point. Yeah, because on GNOME, that's one thing. Because one thing I've because I've got Mint on on well, my laptops now, and one of the reasons that I put it on was because I heard that with twenty one three, they've uh, put a lot more touchpad gestures in and stuff, and they do work. It's better than not having them like they did before. But you know, they're all on X eleven, and they basically act like keyboard shortcuts yeah. rather than actual gestures. If you know what I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. It, they still work surprisingly well actually better than i anticipated um but i do worry that mint is probably falling a bit behind on this no 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 you if if you think that you're misunderstanding what mint is good point good point they're they're the most conservative well one of the most conservative desktop distros out there apart from xsc true oh good god yes but (laughs) i mean um I think you're right, though. Uh, the perception, if you're looking for something modern, I mean, Mint is definitely not going to be your bag. You're going to have to go with Gnome or Plasma. Hmm. So, yeah, in in that sense, I, I can agree. I mean, they, they they do seem like they're look they're falling behind. If you're a regular user, I guess I'm just not right. Hmm. I enjoy the stuff, but you know, when I'm in Caden Live the entire time, what does it matter if I can do a three finger swipe over to the next desktop, right? Like. Yeah, I'm I'm hitting S and cutting things. Yeah, it all depends on use case and what you're used to, and then but you do develop a bit of muscle memory, don't you? Um, it's like yeah. you, like the um, pressing the super key to get the overview in GNOME. Once you get used to doing that, you then find yourself doing it all the time. Yeah, well, that's what makes Elementary OS weird, right? Like you, you kind of go into it expecting that you can hit the super key and it'll open the menu, but it just opens up a help dialog, and you're like, mm. "But I just wanted to launch an app. What do you mean?" And it's the same with uh, it's the same with Mint as well. Like that's just how it is. So has anybody tried used- Elementary recently? I, I I tried it maybe six eight months ago around the time when we had Danny on Mintcast. That was the last time I tried it. I yeah, had it in. Yeah. KVM but that and, was the new version, right? That was yeah. the yeah. The, that was seven. I think there's been seven point one since then. Yeah. yeah, because it was she had incorporated the new uh, features for cl- colorblind. Yes, yes, oh, you had. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was really kind of interested. My my oldest son that still lives here at home is colorblind, and I was showing him some of those features, and mm-hmm. and it was kind of game. I mean, he can't, he won't go and use something like that, but yeah. it was. You know, it was real as I, wa- I wanted to know if it was actually something that was making a difference in how well he could see what was going on. And it, it seemed to, according to some of the things he said. So that was it was interesting. I, you know, you elementary, you get a new version when you get a new version. You know, it's. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just one of those things that uh, comes along right. as fast as they can do it. Yeah, it, well, it is what it is, isn't it? It yeah. is what it is. Um and for the people that use it, I think that's okay. And that's uh, exactly the kind of thing Leo was describing about Mint users. You know, we yeah. Well, the yeah. the whole point of of user experience is to is to lock the people into it. Like 
once you understand it, then you understand it and you're going to stick around and continue to use it. But the moment that you make this grand paradigm shift because you know best, that's when you're going to piss everybody off. Now, to go back real quick to what uh, uh, Majid touched on a little while ago, the uh, screen mirroring from... Is that with the fingering or... (laughs) <laughs> he uh we brought up briefly the screen mirroring oh uh, yeah iphone and ubuntu thing yeah 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 that looks really cool though um now i don't know if it's just because um i don't understand how it works it looks just like vnc i don't know if it's because joey uh, it's a gif right so i think a it GIF might be mean. choppy yeah yeah gif exactly and yep like you said I, gif I, mm-hmm. yeah gif I'm yeah, on your yeah. side with that one, Leo. I, I appreciate you on that. <laughs> uh, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just being a contrarian. I, don't I care know why you call it. <laughs> it looks uh, it looks kind of choppy, but I think that might just be because it's a GIF, right? Like if I were to put this on my machine, I would probably have a much smoother experience. Um, but I don't know what what uh, I wonder if it actually says what protocol. Oh, it uses UX Play, and that uses hardware accelerated H.264 decoders where available. So. It's going to be a kind of VNC style experience because you're having airplay to mirror it. mode apparently. Airplay yeah. mirror mode. Yeah, and that works pretty good like so if you do airplay to a TV or something like that, it's it's quite smooth. Mm-hmm. But there are times where you can tell that it's being encoded and streamed on the fly. But um I if if you can get that that experience on Ubuntu's desktop, then that's that's as good as it gets. That's the best experience you could ever possibly have. So I think I might try this out. And yeah, I think and does, this, does this work with Android too, or is this? There's already a thing for Android. Yeah, it's There's already GS one. Connect, right? In uh, in GNOME, it's GS Connect. Uh, oh, and that oh, gives you the. Uh, oh, is it screen G- mirroring do you mean G- as well? Do you mean G Streamer? No, G Streamer, I think, is uh, the plugin that you have to use to do the encoding or the decoding, something like yeah, that. That's, okay. That's but, the audio uh, pipeline stuff. But I do think they use G Streamer underneath GS Connect to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, G GS, I do believe that's. I'm pretty sure that's right. GS Connect is because I always thought I always thought GS Connect was just the GNOME version of KDE Connect. Well, yeah, that's I th- what I thought. Doesn't too. doesn't KDE Connect to do the screen mirroring thing too? Uh, not that I've seen it do it. I mean, I haven't tried recently. I suppose, yeah. Okay, more great radio. Man tries yep. stuff on his new desktop. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, the reason I ask is because I have to create uh, a training video because we use we use Android tablets with a electronic log for work, mm-hmm. and we've been pulled over for some things. We, we've been written up for some things that seem to be stuff that guys don't know how to do and i was going to make a training got in video trouble. bill got in trouble i mean well you got to you got to have a bill of lading number on there and so most guys don't know how to get into the menu to add those numbers in and uh they wanted me cuz i'm the so nerd I, you know to so make a training I, video so i i can do this quite easily on windows uh, yeah i can too yeah um and i remember we even did um so we were doing some kind of simulation training and so we needed a monitor obviously i couldn't you know and i had to make it simulate you know going into different heart rhythms or blood pressure crashing and all this kind of stuff and um I, yeah i managed to do it from my android phone phone and use the windows partition on my laptop to do it so it's, it seems to be reasonably easy to do it on that although i did learn something this is slightly a bit off on a tangent but so you know the you know that this Windows subsystem for Linux. There was the, the, there's a Windows subsystem for Android, except they now they killed it. They killed it, yeah. Which yeah. I thought was really um, interesting, actually. Okay. I that was... Do you know why they 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 started the WSA for Android? They they started that because all the apps on the Windows Store sucked. Yeah. And so they had to be able to let people use the apps on Android to make that yeah. work. But now that more and more adoption is happening for the Windows Store. They're just like, well, we don't need the Android thing anymore. So, it, but is it actually happening? Is it, are you getting more and more stuff on the Microsoft Store? Oh, what? I don't see. What do you mean? Like, what? What are you looking for? So, that's so, not there. So no, no, really not. Because what I'm saying is, is that so? One of the things was that yeah, as you said, there's the app gap. You know. Yeah. And 
things like games um, and things like that. Um, and, and, you know, nobody's going to rewrite their Android game for Microsoft Windows 11. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so I I often thought that that was one of the reasons it was for. Not for, not for the big name apps, you know, like the Netflix and the Prime videos or... Yeah, because those are whatever. there. Yeah, because those will be there and those will be there pretty quickly. Um, but it's some things which are a bit more niche, which you might want to use, use your touchscreen for. Because remember, I remember when they debuted it, they debuted it on the Surface... Pro, I want to say eight, but I might be wrong. Um, that's when they debuted it. So, you know, it's a Windows tablet, isn't it? Really? Um, and how do you get tablet apps? Well, if you can have, if you can run Android apps, now you don't need to make Windows specific right. tablet, uh, tab, tablet apps. Um, so I, I, the reason I thought it was interesting was that it seems that Microsoft's kind of saying, okay, there's no point. Actually, I, the way I looked at it, it was slightly differently. I didn't. I th- I don't think those apps are there. I just think that the um they just realized that there isn't the amount of work that they have to put in for that, mm. for the amount of reward that they're getting afterwards. Remembering who uses Windows devices, you know, and the fact that there's a lot of enterprise and all this kind of stuff, and the fact that still generally people buy laptops rather than Windows tablets, you know. As, as good as the Surface is and stuff like that, people generally buy Windows laptops, don't they? Yeah. Um, and so I think they just came up to some kind of calculation of, okay, you know, the benefit is this, but the amount of work is this. So we're not getting a good enough cost benefit ratio. We're just going to pull it. That's the way I looked at it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's probably what it really boils down to, to be honest. I you just know, like being cynical. No, I mean... Well, I mean, I'm being cynical as well, aren't I? Really, I suppose. <laughs> well, but, uh, see, we can we can just stew in it together, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because just because I I have you ever tried actually downloading anything from the Microsoft Store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's n- it is not it's a fun not experience. Great. Nah, I mean, but it's fine. It I, makes I KD did... Discover look really good. <laughs> <laughs> it um, I use cider um. Because I have an Apple Music thing. Uh, so I yeah. decided to get music on both Windows and Linux. Um, mm-hmm. I, I even paid for that one. That one was worth the money. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get that one through the Microsoft Store, which is, it's fine. Uh, I also have the, I had an Xbox Game Pass for a little while. So I had all the access to all those free games and stuff. Um, and that was fine. It's fine. Ooh, it's fine. Speaking it's of fine. that. Uh, so I put Edge on mint 21 and i decided i wanted to know because around about the time google shit canned their stadia project like i think that week uh xbox came out with their cloud gaming as if you know well finally they got rid of it now we can do it you know that's right it yeah. kind of felt and i decided to give that a shot because the, the kids upstairs they all use the game pass ultimate and that's always been my thing with gaming on linux you know, Steam kind of gets us a good ways, but it's never really going to be adopted full Steam ahead because no you can't intended. get like, yeah, ah, uh, <laughs> he gets me. This guy gets me um, <laughs> because the kids are all playing Xbox Game Pass Ultimate or the or the whatever the Sony thing is. And so I thought I'd give it a try. And by God, I'll tell you what, it, it's every bit just as good. I mean, they bill it as being um, beta, but uh, and it works in all the browsers, actually. But I, I figured it would probably just work a little better with Edge. And man, oh, man, it's it's a good experience, really. If, you got, if you've got the Game Pass Ultimate account, um, at least as far as I can tell, you've got access to all the same games you would with Game Pass, uh, except cloud-based so you've got the same benefit as before where you don't have to have a lot of compute power uh it's all done on the cloud and it plays perfectly well through the browser um i must say one thing about microsoft edge is in my experience and uh, this is just a uh, just me i do find it is the best browser for progressive web apps for me um and i've tried them out on quite a lot of different browsers and i don't know what it is exactly um 
but yeah, I did. So for example, the prime video app is just a progressive web app, mm-hmm. you know, and it all, and it always works better for some reason. I don't, as I said, on Microsoft edge. Now this could be because of the fact that I've not used Chrome for God knows how many years. And if I actually got good man, proper, proper Google Chrome, maybe that would work really well as well, but, yeah, I'm, but, don't I'm, do I'm, it. but I'm just not doing that. No, I mean, I, I do my best to try and uninstall Chrome. I'm really annoyed that I can't uninstall Chrome off all of my devices. Well, have you tried that mint, that mint tool that comes with, uh, the OS that creates, it can literally create a PWA with any browser you've got installed. Yeah. And on yes. Cinnamon. Yeah. And yes. On Cinnamon. And yeah. it will, it will, you can tell it whether or not you want it to use a separate uh, profile, meaning it can be completely siloed off from everything else that's running on, say, Chromium or Firefox or whatever. So what and, I found, so what I found was it was slightly hit and miss. And I don't know if it's, user error it was my fault that i didn't set the thing up correctly or whatever um so because i remember because manjaro has it as well manjaro's got that uh that web apps feature as well is it the same app or is it like it looks port? very it, it, it looks very similar i mean i would assume that it, it is probably different. is because it is in the aur i've got it running on okay on arch as well yeah. because there's really nothing else quite like it that i can tell yeah you run arch do you i do yeah, okay, fine. Two fine. machines. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, brilliant! Mm-hmm. Arch and, they, I, and they only break a couple times a year. I I have not in in fifteen. Look at look years. at how he's stuttering right now. Well, because I'm trying to. I I want to not. <laughs> he's talk he's out counting of the, how many times it's happened. I don't want to talk out of the hind end. Months. Yeah, past it's four been hours. About fifteen yeah. years. I've had maybe yeah. in twenty twenty four, maybe half a dozen times. <laughs> that grub thing a few years ago was the only problem I've had where it just. And I knew it was coming. I knew about the problem because they were talking about it on the Am I that old? Podcast. It's a few years ago? Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what I'm talking about then? That, that thing oh, yeah. where they made Grub unbootable. Oh, it, it, I'm pretty sure it made it into the history episode of uh, yeah. Linux. Well, it was, it was the one time everybody could say, see, see, arches. See, yeah. Told you. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. Well, that's the only problem I've had in years, well, literally. 98% of the rest of the time, it's just user error. But, I mean, it's yeah. so easy to do it that, mm. you know, it gets the reputation. Actually, um, what well, something you said makes me I want to ask a question. Why is it you use uh, Apple Music? Is it just because of the fact that you've got, um, you know, iPhones and iPads Family and stuff, stuff like that? Or is it... Is it's, that what it is? Yeah, it's cheaper to buy because we have all we've you're, we're using all of the slots in the family thing. Okay, yeah. fine. No, the, the the only reason I'm asking is because well, I, the alternative um, is Spotify, and absolutely not. Why? What have you got against Spotify? Uh, well, I use the free tier, and that pissed me off enough to never look at Spotify ever again. Fair enough. Put pie hole behind it. Problem no, solved. There's no way those those are those are first party apps or first party ads, man. There's no way those aren't coming through. <laughs> um, so I, so I've been around all most of these different web, you know, these streaming services at some point or another. Spotify, Deezer, Tidal. Yeah, I would use Amazon, Tidal before Spotify. Um, Apple Music, um, and I always find myself going back to Spotify because it just seems to be the one that integrates better into anything. So like if you've got a smart speaker or something, the Spotify bit works better. Even on Amazon Alexas, the um, Spotify integration is better than their Amazon Music integration, which is a bit ironic, kind of, really. Um, you buy headphones, like I bought some um, Sony headphones and they even had a tap to Spotify. You know, it would automatically launch it and start, you know, listening. You know, you can start listening to your Spotify library when the minute you put it in you know, into your ears. So there's all sorts of things like that. Actually, it, what, that no, sorry, I lie. It wasn't the Sony ones. It was the Jabra ones. Sony had Tidal integration. Um, the reason I ask is because then I, uh, I've, I've been mentioning it to Bill and I was on Minkcast as well. You know, I've started getting into a bit of the, the analog headset game. You know, hey, now. Yeah, getting right a here. DAC, getting a DAC and getting, you know, in-ear monitors, you know, like the ones that Bill's wearing at the minute, yeah? Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things I thought was spatial audio. I've never tried spatial audio. I wonder it's if it a, actually... It's weird, man. It's fine. 
what I found is that because so what I was going to do was I was going to uh, get a Tidal subscription because I know that Tidal does really high flax and high bit rate and spatial audio and all that sort of stuff and Sony integrates with it mm-hmm. um, and so I thought I would do that but then I uh, because I'm a cheapo I found that I could get a free trial of Amazon Music Unlimited um, which has spatial audio and um, there are some tracks it's not all the tracks but there was, there, there's a uh, like a playlist called Best of Special Audio. There are a couple of them where I thought, bloody hell, this sounds really good. Actually, this sounds really, really mm. good. And it's not just the headphones, because when I've changed headphones around to see whether it was actually what I was using was the issue. No, it was the fact that it was coming up Dolby Atmos and how many kilobytes, you know, thousand kilobytes or whatever. Yeah. You know, and as it, not all the tracks, definitely, but there were a couple of them. And I thought, this is good, man. So it's more than just the head tracking stuff where you look yeah. this way and the audio is a little, is, you know, it, it moves, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's I mean, more there was than a. That? Yeah, so there was. Um, there, I, I remember one track was uh, uh, Get Lucky, you know, by Pharrell Williams um, uh-huh. and Daft Punk, right? And Daft Punk, it, one of the best it, bands of all time. A hundred percent. And it sounded like you were standing on the stage. Yeah, hmm. that's that's how the noise was. You know, it felt like yeah. it was around you, right? Um, rather than that, you're just listening to it. You got this feeling of I'm because initially I was thinking to myself, why is it I can hear the guitar over in that corner, and then why is yeah. it the bass is back there? And then I was kind of like, oh, so, oh, I get it now. So, now, so that's said, spatial audio, not Dolby Atmos, right? Well, that's the other thing. I'm not entirely sure which bits what exactly. Okay, <laughs> you know, the Atmos um, thing is kind of. <laughs> That's all more I know. of one all technology that'll do it. Very yeah. proprietary technology that'll yeah. do it. So I, I, I don't get, think it's the only one. I get those features in Apple Music, so I'm gonna have to yeah, try this out. Uh, yeah, so that's, like, that's what I was going to say because one the, because ironically, Apple because you can get Apple Music on Android, and I remember getting a three month trial of that a couple of years ago. Yeah, and I they do lossless. And I remember right. thinking, you know, um, at the time I didn't actually have decent enough headphones to take advantage of it. Um, the one thing is, is that uh, I think Spotify is a bit like YouTube in the sense that there's because there's an algorithm and, be- and because it sends up recommendations and that it's quite well established as well. Yeah. It's the user interface and stuff is just a bit quicker and nicer. And especially if you've made your own playlists and stuff, you know, you can import them into different devi- uh, devices. There's all these kind of um, there's web services that will import playlist here and export it into the other one. It, but it's a little bit of a faff. And yeah, there's no algorithm. So if you're into discovering new music, as it were, uh, I don't think um, some of these services are as good at that. Yeah, I think Spotify does take the cake on stuff like that. Yeah. But then and, and, I'll just ask someone, like, hey, I know you got Spotify. Can you tell me what's up? And then I'll just make a playlist in Apple Music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, so Apple Music had some good... Because uh, I remember Apple Music was the only other one which had some good curated playlists, I thought. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and, and they're pretty they're pretty well updated. But I think Spotify really does win that battle. Yeah, yeah. So Because I don't think Amazon's is. And so I've been list- just listening to songs I already know, but I know are very good. So, like, I was listening to... Um, I'm a big fan of Muse, so I've been listening to some of Muse's um, okay. uh, albums from a couple of years ago. All right, so do, a do me a favor. you got to take a screenshot of this playlist you're talking about that has all the spatial audio stuff. Uh, you know, Give me like 10 tracks, and I'll check it out, and we'll see if, um, if it really lives up to the hype. Because I'm interested. All I ever got from the spatial audio thing was like I turned my head, and it sounded weird. And I'm like, mm, I would just rather listen to the music instead. Mm. So now, not only do we have man looks up thing on internet, now we yeah. have man looks thing up on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More great radio. That's right, I was baby. a long time user of Pandora for the streaming because they're kind of the pioneer in all that. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. And then I've tried Spotify. I don't know. I. Yeah, but, but you got to remember, though, the reason I liked Pandora was because they were pirates. Yeah. They they did they didn't care. There there was a long trail of them in email telling their employees to just bring in MP3s, like whatever you got, just bring them in. And then some of these employees would literally just pirate everything and bring yeah. it in, and those would be part of those pure curated playlists that Pandora offered for a while. They got they got sued into oblivion and fixed their act, but then by that time, 
you know, Apple Music and Spotify and everybody else had come out and ate their lunch. I think they were kind of the first that really t created a good algorithm too for uh, like to listen to radio type music for the and first 30 minutes and then it got a little repetitive i i'm i listened to a lot of european trance music and it always worked really well for that but then when when i decided against my will to get a youtube premium account uh family size that is you get five and that's only six hundred dollars a month folks <laughs> well i mean it's ten dollars it's 9.99 but it comes with um youtube music which is kind of a good value if you think about it because yeah, I, I don't says, care what anybody says, says man that dislikes chrome yeah it's a good value I, I know but the rest of the family if you could see that you could get rid of every other app on the all the fire tvs and the the nvidia shield you could get rid of every other app and just leave youtube on there and they could sit and watch their stupid uh minecraft game streams and all that stuff and be completely happy the rest of their lives it's it's yeah you know what i though i found ironic though uh, well i like youtube premium in you know it gets rid of the ads and all that oh, sort yeah. of thing but um it's not actually um the best app to use um it's i found it quite janky um and it's you know it would get things wrong it would, it would sometimes it would connect bluetooth sometimes it wouldn't and it was entirely a youtube you know music app thing rather than anything else which i got which again i thought was a bit kind of well you know google you, you had one job google you had one job <laughs> <laughs> on that uh on that playlist you sent me i i see that uh you're currently on luke combs and now i just need to know for my own personal edification um, it doesn't fit do at all about, <laughs> how, how do you feel about modern american country um, I've got to be completely honest. I have never heard of Luke Holmes before. I'd seen that. I well, you're going to listen to him now. He's going to go on ahead and sit back there. We're going to play that for you, okay? He's going to he's going to sing and serenade you, and yeah. he's going to love Gold. it. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm all, we got to start you back in the '90s, though. There's a tear in my beer. That's right. All my exes. Um, where where do they live? Oh, my exes live in Texas. Y'all didn't know you were going to get serenaded today. You, uh, hey. You know, I've heard of songs being murdered, but that's genocide. <laughs> Shut up. That was beautiful and you know it. <laughs> I mean, uh, I thought, you, I mean, all the cats, all the stray cats in my area have just suddenly come to my house now. You are full of it. You're wishing you could get married again just to have me there and sing it. That's your... right. That's right. Oh, I, need, yeah, I, I need you. I wouldn't mind. I, I wouldn't mind getting married again. The problem is I've only I've already got one. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> one is enough, please. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was oh a, gosh. I, I was actually making a joke about this. So somebody was, I was in another Indian guy at work. He's um he of a Hindu background. We were making jokes about wives and whatever. And he made the classic Muslim joke. Oh, well, you're a Muslim, innit? You can have up to four. And I'm like, mate, have you met a Muslim woman before? You, you even suggest that you're going to get your bollocks ripped off, right? <laughs> and then and, and and then I said, but I can understand why you're feeling so bitter about it because you apparently have to live seven lifetimes with the same spouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, I can I can see why you're so bitter about it now. <laughs> Oh God! On that on that bombshell, we we better wrap this up because yeah. it's special audio time. Yeah, yeah. Leo's got to go. Listen I got to things some shit. to do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and report got, back. He's got he's got. There's Pink Floyd on the playlist, so I'm I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to this. I saw. Oh, and by the way, Flowers by Miley Cyrus. Yes, please. Good she's, lord. She's got. She is one of my absolute favorite guilty pleasures when Look, it comes I to I did pop not music. make this playlist yet. Amazon made this playlist. Yeah, that's what I, I would say too. I call it the best too. of space. Yeah, that's course. exactly that's what, I what I'd say, say if I was called out on all that. God almighty. <laughs> that, is, that is the most Republican playlist I've heard. <laughs> well, it's got David Getter in it. And, you know, Ed Sheeran. It, it's got enough British people. It's got Hermanos Gutierrez. Come on. We, we're, we're, we're transcending borders here. Right. -o. All right, kids. Let us know what you think about all this stuff. I don't even remember what all we talked get about. Your, get now. your headphones in there. Let's listen to the yeah. special audio. Yeah. Let us know what you what you make of all this. Move your head and sound goes crazy stuff. Um, show at linuxotc.org. 
comment directly in the socials or on the website. We'd love to hear from you. Please do. Give us ideas for stuff to talk about. I don't know. Anything. Tell me how wrong I am. That usually is the best way to get people to write in. And then we'll ignore it and then totally go on, go off on tangents. We might. We might just do that. Anyway, we'll be back in two weeks. Until then, I've been Bill. I'm reevaluating my life choices. <laughs> and I'm Leo. I've, I've, I'm still. I'm still Leo. Have a good one, folks. <laughs>